Hi Isabel, thank you ever so much for joining me today to talk about your fantastic achievements um, within engineering here at UCL. And um, this is part of the Inward 2020 celebrations. And perhaps we could start um, by talking about your, uh, your field. Perhaps you could describe your area of study and research. Okay, um, so I kind of work at the um, intersection of social science and computational science and um, my PhD research is on linguistic threat assessment um, mm -hmm. which means I kind of try to study violence through uh, language use or computational mm -hmm. linguistics um, mm -hmm. so my aim is kind of to better understand uh, violence or pot potentially predict uh, when people might be violent based on their language use for example, online. Mm -hmm. um, so that means I've worked on uh, studies that look at language use, um, for example, on extremist forums or terrorist manifestos or even uh, threats directed at public figures. Wow, that sounds um, very important and very interesting. Thank you. So who or what inspired you to become an engineer? Would you describe yourself as an engineer? Um, not really, but um, funnily enough, uh, my dad is an engineer mm -hmm. and um, or actually an applied mathematician. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, he really tried to kind of spike my interest in maths and natural sciences. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, at the time, it never really clicked. Um, mm -hmm. Also, in secondary school, I was really kind of insecure about maths and natural sciences, but ironically, I did end up at the engineering department. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah, I'm doing something, uh, I guess it kind of means everything went full circle like, in a way. Mm. So did your dad inspire you to, to, to join the field or was it something else? Um, <laughs> I guess in a way, I guess maybe he planted the seeds mm -hmm. and in my own way, through kind of a detour, um, studying psychology and linguistics, I did end up here in, at the engineering faculty. Great, thank you. What's your favourite part of your research? Um, I think my favourite part is that I get to work with really uh, great people who are yeah really inspiring also um, I'm lucky to be part of two different research groups so one that's more focused on data science and um, yeah there are really some really great and smart people in that group and the other research group I'm a part of um, is focused more on terrorism mm -hmm. and uh, we're actually a team of all women um, my fellow PhD students and I. So that's um, also really nice and I think everyone's really uh, supportive and inspiring and yeah I'm I think that's my favorite part about mm. doing research. Yeah. That sounds great. What is the most valuable lesson you've learned in your career so far? Um, so in the past I uh, struggled a little bit with um, imposter syndrome. Mm -hmm. So that's having the feeling that one day people around you might find out that hey she's actually not that smart or what is she doing here so kind of feeling like a fraud mm -hmm. um but after kind of learning about this and speaking to other people and really people at all different levels mm -hmm. um i learned that most people feel that way mm -hmm. um so even like the most brilliant professors sometimes also feel that way and that really made me feel better and I think that's quite a, a valuable lesson I've learned. Yeah, definitely. Thank you. <laughs> Could you describe a typical day in your research, probably before lockdown? Okay. Um, I'm at my computer most of the time. Uh, so I mostly work with um, open source data that's just available online. So there's not really any uh, field work or lab work involved. Um, so most of the time, I guess I'm kind of uh, programming or writing, um, both of which I really enjoy. 
-hmm. and I guess uh, I have quite a few meetings normally um, mm -hmm. so for example a team meeting with uh, other PhD students and our supervisor and we'll talk about our research mm -hmm. and um, yeah before lockdown I also really enjoyed going to conferences and traveling um, that's mm -hmm. another really great part about doing a PhD yeah yeah thank you and so how has the current COVID-19 situation affected your work? Um, I'm quite fortunate in that it hasn't really changed much um, since I have, uh, like I said, I, it's easy for me to access uh, data. Um, I guess the only difference is um, being at home all the time and it took some time to adjust, but mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely comfortable with it now and I've taken up a few new hobbies um so overall the work-life balance is okay yeah are you able to still conduct your research online um yeah yeah so uh i'm in the final stages of my phd so i have all my data and i'm just basically finishing up my analyses and writing everything up so everything's kind of as normal uh, yeah really fortunate in that sense yeah, not been too disruptive for you no <laughs> it's good to hear and finally what advice would you give a young person or even your younger self who um wanted to enter a stem related field what what advice would you give them um i would say um yeah don't, don't be afraid to ask um so if there's a specific person you want to work with or um, a specific place you want to work or uh, I would say just send the email and put yourself out there because um, yeah the worst thing people can tell you is a no and yeah by putting yourself out there you can end up in uh, really great places and that's also how I end up uh, here at UCL. Yeah. Great, thank you very much for talking to me today. Yeah, no worries. Thank you.